Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Today, she definitely says it like she means it. The very funny and always honest Joy Behar is here. And the Choose Clinton Kelly shows us how to shake up our Thanksgiving menu by putting a twist on traditional dishes. Plus, all of today's juiciest hot topics. Now, here's Wendy. Like many of you, I didn't get much sleep last night <laughs> on account of the grand jury deciding not to charge the Ferguson cop <laughs> who, who killed unarmed Michael Brown, the teenager. Remember, this all happened back in August. Yeah. You don't re need to be reminded of the story. But um, then the town, first of all, I was waiting at 5 o'clock in the kitchen, you know, just waiting for the verdict, waiting for the ver verdict. And I had, you know, our nephew is 21, our, our son is 14, and I had the boys there, and we're watching, and we're snacking, and we're waiting. It didn't happen until 9 o'clock at night. I, some people in our Hot Topics meeting said, well, maybe they made it 9 o'clock at night because, um, it, it can just be swept under the rug. And other people said, well, maybe they were setting Ferguson up for, you know, going wild in the street, you know? Looting time is after dark. You know, you know, destruction time. I wasn't shocked by the verdict. Were you? No. I wasn't shocked. All I was doing was bracing myself. Yet another time where, you know, we keep the conversation going with our son, who's 14. Another time where I have to worry about my father my husband, my son, your kids, if you happen to be a person of color, and the target that they have on their backs. Um, all cops aren't bad cops, so shout out to the good ones. But, you know, my, my, thought, my thought about police officers is they seem to be the lowest on the totem pole of law enforcement, but they're the ones who put their behinds on the line every single day. I think what we need to do is start paying cops a whole lot more money yeah. and and also instead of just sending them to police academy how about police academy combined with a four-year criminal justice degree from a university yeah. so, that, <laughs> so that they are as armed with the law as lawyers are or the chief of police or the detectives who we seem to respect a little bit more than just the beat cop also what about, and you know, Michael's mother wants the cops to be wearing cameras on their uniforms. How about cameras on the guns and the billy clubs? <laughs> it's, it's just, um, you know, it's all very sad. Um, you know, and I want to shout out to you all for showing up today and everybody who watches this show because I feel like until we can galvanize ourselves as a people and have all this beautifulness, get along the way they do in, in here, out there in the streets. This is a conversation that has to keep on happening. And by the way, shout out to Ferguson and, and the other cities around the country who took it upon themselves to burn and pillage and loot. Take it from somebody who grew up 
for the fir uh, my first few years in Asbury Park, New Jersey, all right? We moved from Asbury in 1970 because of the riots. Uh, many of you all are old enough to remember. They burnt down Newark, they burnt down Asbury, they burnt down many places around the country. 44 years later, Asbury is just getting Springwood Avenue and, other, and some other impoverished areas back together. They're just getting it back together. By burning down where you live, you are doing nothing but ruining it for yourselves. Because, yes. on social media. So this verdict is going on. Many of us are crying or huddling with our kids or whatnot. In the meantime, on social media, people are complaining that Dancing with the Stars was interrupted. Are you serious? Who are you people? By the way, Alphonse danced really well last night. I heard. I'm just saying. I wasn't watching because, you know, on days like this, it's really difficult to come and do our cheap and cheerful show, the, giving you the Wendy that you know, when, you know, we are live out of New York. It's five minutes after 10 o'clock. You know, it's my duty to say something um, about certain social issues that go on. But, so back to the interruption of all the channels, so people were like, oh my gosh, put Dancing with the Stars back on. That made me want to throw up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, um... But my Hot Topics team brought in the, the... Actually, you all's DVRs were all messed up also, yeah. and you were watching the verdict as well. Mm -hmm. But you did manage to squeeze out an episode. They gave it to me this morning. <laughs> Alphonse stole the show. He got a perfect score. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in my black feelings today, though. After the verdict, I, I, it's hard for me to watch a black man tap dance. <laughs> I don't, anyway, so um, Alphonse got a little help from Will Smith. Apparently, Will Smith has like 700, seven, um, seven, 75 million Facebook followers, and he sent a message out to all his Facebook people to vote for Alphonse. And you would think that would really help, and that I've been telling you all along, I think that Alphonse is going to win Dancing with the Stars. Thank goodness the season ends tonight. Does the season end tonight? Thank God. <laughs> anyway, um, I told you that Alphonse would win, except there's a dark horse in the race. D that Duck Dynasty girl, uh, cute Sadie Robertson. Now, she doesn't dance as well as Alphonse, but guess who she got help from? Liam Payne from One Direction. And, and, he, and One Direction has way more followers on social than Will Smith. And this is how I rash... First of all... Damn it, man, I've been rooting for Alphonse all along, but I'm a sucker for a relationship. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna root for Kate, uh, Sadie. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because that's who everyone's gonna root for. See, when he put it out there on his social media that he was showing up, and do you think that there's gonna be a romance that spawns after this? Yes. yes. Which is more interesting to watch than the decades-long bromance that's been going on with Will and Alphonse. I mean, look, look, we know what they are. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we know what they are. It's nothing new. They all work together on the Fresh Prince show, so it's nothing new and exciting. You know, we need excitement in our otherwise boring lives, don't we? So it's exciting to see young love about to pop off. Well, season 19 of Dancing with the Stars is over tonight at 9 on ABC. Thank you. So, come here. Come here. I am about to gross you out with, with social disgustingness. Look. There's a shocking new twist in the Halle Berry battle with her ex, Gabriel Aubrey. Lean closer, because we've never heard of this in all my decades of doing hot topics. Halle reportedly is claiming that Gabriel is trying to make their six-year-old Dala, I mean Nala. <laughs> that, that, that's a combination of daughter and Nala, and that he wants Dala's. No, look. <laughs> try to make Nala appear less black. <laughs> I know! <laughs> I'm shocked and I'm sick. She's alleging in the court 
that Gabriel straightens her hair and highlights Nala's hair to make her look white. Whoa. The judge believed Hallie and said nobody's to do anything to any six year old looks anytime in the near never. Right. Now, there are a few things like about Gabriel that the streets have been saying for a long time, and that is, you know, yes, he's a nice looking mad man. Mad man. <laughs> all, all these Freudian slips. Yes, he's a nice looking man, but they say that he's alleged to be very nasty, mean, and vindictive. Oh. And if something like this is even remotely true, it's disgusting. The reason that we're not showing you a, do a picture of Nala is because, you know, Hallie's a friend to the show, and she's one of those um, actors that, that goes to Congress and marches for the rights for the paparazzi not to appear at the schools. And so, you know, it's not illegal for us to show you the picture. I'm just doing it out of solidarity in the name of motherhood. <laughs> <clears throat> not good. What are you doing? Giving her a kitty perm and a flat iron? Oh she has swingy hair. Her hair is like loose. You've seen the little girl. She's always out with Hallie. She, she's got like, I thought, I thought they were California sun-kissed natural blonde highlights in her hair, but, but maybe not. Oh. You know? And I thought it was a nice loose curl, but maybe it's a, a relaxer to relax other curls. I don't like this story. Do you like this story? No! But it does smack of juiciness, though, doesn't it? Yes. And this is that time of year when Hallie, Hallie goes through things during the holidays, like many of us. Because oh. the holidays, are that, that's the time of year, right? Yes. When things piss you off all year, you set it straight. If, you're not gonna, if you don't want to be friends with somebody, you break up the friendship so you don't have to buy a gift. <laughs> Listen, do you remember Thanksgiving? It was Thanksgiving 2012. And Olivier, her now husband, boyfriend back then, um, Olivier and Hallie were in the house awaiting the arrival of Nala to be brought back home for Thanksgiving. The car rolls up on the motor court. And it, that's what rich people have. They don't have driveways. <laughs> Look, the car rolls up on the motor court and it stops. And Gabriel is ready to return Nala to her mother. Only the two men fight like dogs outside. Do you remember? Do you remember what Gabriel looked like after that fight? Yeah. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Olivier beat the stuffing out of him. By the way, do you put sausage in your stuffing? You, clap if you put a little sausage in your stuffing. Me too, that's not weird. Do you put oysters in your stuffing, ever? You don't like an oyster stuffing? No. You like an oyster stuffing? It's, it's very Portuguese? And very Southern, too. Like, well, uh, well per perfect. We need to start mingling cultures. Yeah. Mom, I know you're watching this. Get a few oysters for the stuffing, and don't forget the sagey sausage. Nobody just likes that bread. <laughs> You know what I Oh, dry. <laughs> anyway, a very surprising person is slamming Ariana Grande. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> besides you, <laughs> madam. <laughs> it's Bette Midler. Ooh. Well, Bette is complaining about how sexed up these pop stars are being these days. And she happened to single out Ariana Grande. And here's what she says. By the way, we very rarely see Ariana with her hair, with, with that thing down. Yeah. <laughs> Cute. Anyway, Bet says, it's always surprising to see someone like Ariana Grande with that wholesome voice slithering around on a couch looking so ridiculous. I don't know who's telling her to do it. I wish they'd stop. Trust your talent. <laughs> You don't have to make a whore out of yourself to get ahead. You really don't. I totally get what Bette Midler is saying. However, sometimes, like, when an older person um, speaks out about stuff that's factual in pop culture, they seem even older. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Do you, do you know, all due respect, do you know what I'm saying? I mean, Bette Midler is 68 years old, and that's not old, but it's old to be talking about 
you know, pop culture and what's going on. I mean, we don't say anything when, well, yes, we do here at Hot Topics. When Madonna, when Madonna slithers around on a couch, and we got used to slitheration many years ago. <laughs> that little Britney Spears and that tutu, you know, and that, that, that shirt that she, you know, oops, I did it again. <laughs> Uh, a sidebar to Bette Midler, is that some fantastic looking hair and skin and, and stuff at 68? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, she and her husband, they have one of the longest running marriages in Hollywood. He, um, and then they have their daughter. She's cute also. She looks just like Bette. Doesn't Maya Bialik look like Bette Midler also, though? Yeah. Blossom. Um, anyway, back to you, Bette. Bet we, rem we remember you got started doing like burlesque in gay bathhouses with uh, Barry Manilow. Oh. It wasn't a couch you slithered out around on, but you slithered on the piano. <laughs> and, and you have to understand that with each generation, stuff gets unfortunately more risky and more risky and more risky. And this Ariana is just doing, yeah, probably what she's be being told and probably what she sees around her. It's not right for me. I'm glad it's not my daughter. It's not right for my people. I'm glad it's not their daughters. But here's Ariana at the AMAs. And might I say how poised and comfortable she looks on that chair <laughs> with her leg up. Big Sean. Yeah, that's Big Sean's girl. Yeah. Anyway, um, it's not right, but it's the way of the world, Bet. Sorry. You know, at first I agreed with Monica Lewinsky. Like, why would I change my last name? Nobody else in this debacle changed their last name. Clintons didn't change their last name. You know, why should she? It's been over 16 years since Monica says that, you know, um, she's, since that time, Monica says that she's lost jobs, she's lost homes, and it's all because of her name. Oh. Well, um, she says that she's not ashamed of who she is. She didn't say anything about what she's done. She, 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 she just said who she is. She's not ashamed, and so why should she change her name? And the reason that this is coming up is because she recently did an article um, or an interview in a magazine, uh, Proper Magazine? Porter. Pr Porter? Porter. 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 We read everything here. Um, so look, she recently did an interview in Porter Magazine, and, she, and the interviewer said, well, why, why don't you just change your last name? And I was very, very upset this morning. I said, well, why would she have to change her last name? And then I thought about it. I said, well, Lewinsky is not a popular last name. Um, you pair that with Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> and then, then she was saying, like, in the article that she would go and fill out the application for apartments and stuff, and as soon as the landlord sees it, everything is like, ooh, all money's not good money. Maybe she shouldn't live here. You know, the whole complex will be up in arms and stuff like that. And I get it. Like, can you imagine she's applying for a job and you see Monica Lewinsky? And then you see it's Lewinsky and you don't know what to do. I mean, you know, she made a mistake many, many years ago, but many people are still holding her hand to the fire. So then I said, well, maybe she should change her last name because, you know, it's tough enough out here in this world um, if you got a whole big family. But to be a single woman going it alone, turning the key into your apartment, because who wants to be roommates with her? <laughs> I mean... I mean, th she probably doesn't have a lot of guys who want to date her past three hours. <laughs> You're going to stop encouraging me. <laughs> no, but I... So here's what I think she should do. <laughs> I had a whole 360 on this. She should change her last name and change her first name. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Because she's still young. She should not have to live and suffer like this. The Clintons aren't. Until the election. <laughs> then stuff is going to keep coming out. Then she should go to Europe, right? Yeah. And, no, keep her lease here in America. Just go to Europe for two weeks. And while she's there, she's going to get a dimple in her chin. <laughs> well, follow me, follow me, follow me. Get one of them Peter Pan nose jobs. <laughs> right? Go to, like, Frederick Vakai and have them dye her hair platinum blonde and her eyebrows. Get some cheek implants and a little liposuction, and she'll come back. I mean, a handful of people will, and me will know who she is, <laughs> but the world at large will not know, and she'll be able to have some sort of semblance of some sort of life. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying?
keep clapping. Hot Topics is done. <laughs> but we have more great show for you. Uh, from the Chew, our friend Clinton Kelly is here, and he's going to show us how to make some Thanksgiving deliciousness on the side of that dry turkey that you make. Plus, November continues later on. We're going to have more Wendy Watchers give, give, given a chance to win big money. But up next, the really funny and very outspoken Joy Behar is here. So don't go away. Before you sit down for turkey, get hot topics to spice up your table talk. Just calling it the way I see it. And British bad boy Russell Brand. From Katy Perry to his edgy comedy. I'm getting all the tea and crumpets. Tomorrow on an all-new Wendy. So for 16 seasons, our first guest was so entertaining on The View, and now she's doing, a, uh, doing it on stage in her one-woman show. It's called Me, My Mouth, and I. <laughs> Please welcome our friend Joy Behar. Thank you, same to you. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, but there's word in the street that she might be going back to the view. Joy. No, that was, wait a second. That's a, wait a second, that's just a rumor somebody you put out. You and Sherry Shepard. That's a rumor someone put out. I have no idea what they're talking about. Well, if, <laughs> if, um, if they called you up, would you go back? You know, I don't know. I sort of, you know, been there, done that. I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't go back for five days a week. No, no, no. Well, no. <laughs> it's either all or nothing, Joy. I know. I can't. Well, I started. I used to only be on three days a week, and then Barbara would be on two days. That was a great system. Yeah. Loved yeah. it. <laughs> nice long <laughs> yeah. weekend. All right. So, um, back to Ferguson. Oh, yeah. What are your thoughts? <clears throat> Well, you know, it's just again, again, it's the same thing over and over again. How many times are we going to see, yeah. you know, some unarmed black kid get shot? Why 12 uh, shots also? He shot him 12 times. Yeah. I mean, come on. I watch Law and Order all the time, Me SVU too. and all those. When somebody's running, they don't shoot them. They chase them. And if they, if they can't catch them, they don't shoot them. Yes. So I don't like that. And as, as Anderson Cooper pointed out, it's a it's a it's a 99 percent um, black community, Ferguson, and then the, all the cops are white. That has to be switched. Yes. People have to people have to uh, get into the root of racism in the country. In my opinion, you have to understand what's going on. There's a lot of racism in this country. A lot. You know, I mean, look at what the president is going through. Uh -huh. I, I don't think a white president would have the same trouble. I really don't. <laughs> so, um, now I know you're friends with Bette Midler. I am. By People the way, say I look like her. Do you think I look like her? Yeah. Wait, one time I was on a cruise, right? Wait, yeah, okay. Years ago, before The View, I'm on a cruise. I do a, a half-hour set on the cruise. Yes. And then I overhear a woman say, how can they afford Bette Midler? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, by the way, she looks great. She does, and she's got some tour going on. She so looks terrific. She's busy. So what do you think about today's pop stars? Because I know you still follow Hot Topics. I don't care if they're naked. I don't care. <laughs> Go ahead and show all your boobies and everything. Doesn't what affect you? Well, you do have your grandson coming My up. grandson's a boy, so I don't have to worry about it, right? <laughs> <laughs> he might be bringing some of those boobies home one yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have to understand. That's true. You have to, I'll be dead by then. <laughs> you won't have to deal with <laughs> it. You have to understand that our generation, mine and bet, you know, it was like unheard of that someone would get famous from a sex tape. Yes. No one got famous. You went to jail, as a matter of yes, fact. Yes, yes, yes. So it's a completely different world now. You know, we were, we were actually, there were some of us who were actually virgins when we got married. Ooh. Now, who, nowadays, who wants Do a you, virgin? That, Besides, was, what, a Mormon and a terrorist? That's right. That's it. So, so you're with me, then you don't think that keeping your virginity is practical for today's girls? No, no, no. You can't keep your virginity too long. What are you holding on to it for? I, listen. But don't lose it too young, because then it's a mistake, I No, think. yes, not don't too young. Don't lose it too young. But after you're in love with someone, and what's yeah. the difference if you're married or not? That's, I'm a slut in that way. 
Um, what do you think about Monica Lewinsky changing her last name? Which she's not doing that if you just turned on your TV, but she was asked that. No, in but the you interview. think she should, and she should go into witness protection in Europe. I, I, I think that in order for this young lady, and she's still young, isn't she still like, like she, 35 or something? No, I think she, maybe, yeah. She still has more life to but live. But the whole, Wendy, you and I are in the same business. The main thing is to make a name for yourself. She's made a name for herself. Why should she give it up? Let Bill Clinton change his name. Yeah. But if she's being made to suffer, you know, if, if she's not able to keep a job and, you know. I don't believe all that. I don't buy it. You think she's still talking until Maybe the Maybe she's just fussy about what she works at. I mean, you can always get a job as a receptionist. I did. <laughs> I don't believe it. Um, okay, back to the view. Oh, yeah. Did you see your the favorite subject? Did I bet. <laughs> well, I mean, like you're like an insider. Did you? I'm not anymore an insider. Yeah, yeah, you still have friends. You have people. Look. <laughs> did you see the fight the other day? Was that a fight? I didn't see it. What day was that? Wednesday. Well, no. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it, it's, <laughs> No, it, you know, it was an argument, and Rosie was pissed yeah. and chewing gum. Did you see her? What? Really, Rosie? She was pissed and chewing gum like a pissed woman, and they were talking about Bill Cosby. Yeah. And all the girls were trying to be fair and balanced. How can you be fair and balanced in this case, really? How many women have to come out? 150, 3,000? That's come on. What, that's What's what, the number? That's what Rosie said. <laughs> and it wasn't so much to me like what Rosie was saying. It's like the tension that you could cut with a knife. Well, you have to be willing to hear other people's positions on But the she's view. not willing to hear other people's positions. And I like Rosie. Well, as long as I'm not on the show. They are in that picture. Yes. What are you talking All about? All those forced smiles. <laughs> oh, um, but it's. It, I, I mean, like that little Republican over there. Oh, me Nicole. too. She's Nicole. Pretty, yeah, I mean, you know, I have dealt with Elizabeth Hasselbeck and Ann Coulter, okay? This girl is like a day at the beach yeah. compared to them. She's a very nice woman. She came here. Yeah. We had a delightful conversation. Um, so, so tell me something. You and Steve. Yeah. It's, I'm, I'm just saying, I only have a moment with Are you, you. going to ask me if we had sex before we got married? We were together for 30 years before we got married. I think once in a while we did it. No, listen. No, I was going to ask. Um, are, you, are you going, like, to one of your fancy friends' house for Thanksgiving tomorrow? No, I'm going to my daughter's. No, where is and she? My, she lives out in Long Island. Oh, perfect. And my, my uh, son-in-law is cooking. I don't, I don't even have to cook. He's great. He's Italian. He cooks. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. You're not going to have that dry turkey? No, he brines. Oh, anything. oh sure. But, is, that makes it moister? Whatever that means. I've never brined anything. I have no idea yeah, what that what is. Yeah, <laughs> All right, so you have your one-woman show. I do. Which is like stand-up. Well, it has a lot of... It's, here's the thing about the show. It's funny. It's funny. I, I said, well, what am I going to do? I'll tell my story. You know, I changed my life at, at the age of 39 and 40. I completely went into the business at that age. What were you doing before? I you was, were a school teacher. I was a high school English teacher. That's right. I was a... I worked in a mental hospital, which I always say prepared me for the view. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did everything, but then I was a receptionist at Good Morning America after I was a teacher to break into the business. So you'll hear the story. It's a woman's, a woman's story. Okay, so wait. I don't want you to tell the whole story. I so won't. you're a receptionist, and you're giving us Joy Behar funny at the receptionist desk. Kind of. And what happened? Like, some boss came in one well, day? Well, I was and fired. I was fired. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've been, I've been fired for many jobs. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I always love talking to you. Thank so, you. So, listen, um, this one-woman show you have going yeah, on, yeah. you're also going to help a Wendy Watcher win some oh, money. Oh, great. So we're, we're going to take a break right now. And our audience member is going to win some cold, hard cash in a game called Hot Topics Jackpot. Don't miss it. Jackpot. Joy and our audience member Krista will be taking turns spinning the wheel for big money. So I'll ask the questions. Um, if they get, you can collaborate on the answer. And if they get it right, um, Krista goes home with some cold hard cash. Okay. Yeah. Right. Joy, yes. you spin first. Let's see how All much. Right. Let's do it. Big money. But you have to get it right. Don't help them. Oh. People Magazine just named their sexiest man alive. Is it Adam Levine, Chris Hemsworth, 
or Matthew McConaughey. Oh, I do know who well, it is. they're all hot. I know they're hot, but <laughs> I know they're all hot, but uh, I think James. No. Where's Chris? Yeah. Yeah. Chris is big. Chris Hemsworth. Chris. Yeah. Chris. Yeah. Okay. Now you spin, Chris. Oh, all right. What do you do for a living, by the way? I'm a lawyer. She's a lawyer. I'm Long Island. So it'll okay. be 250. Yeah. All right, look. Gwyneth Paltrow's in a public feud with which oh. celebrity? Oh. Krista? Is it Donald Trump? I do. Trump? Know, I do. Yeah. I do. Oh, this is it right. Chris Battle Brown? The, the or is it Martha Stewart? The youth, well, oh. You've been talking about it on Hot Topic a lot lately. Like, like, so uh, I think talk about a food fight. I know. Martha. I think of Martha. course it's Martha. Martha, it's Martha. Stewart, yes! Yeah. Okay. Krista, so far you have 250 Whoa. bucks. Okay. Joy will spin this one. What pop star is going to be performing halftime at the Super Bowl? Is it Katy Perry, Rihanna, or Taylor Swift? Will they all be naked? Oh, <laughs> and slither on a couch. <laughs> Katy Perry. Yeah. Katy Perry. Go ahead, you Katy. say it. Yes! Katy Perry! Congratulations! Okay, now you spin. Okay. Krista, where are you from? Long Island. Nice. <laughs> Demi Lovato recently admitted that she had a falling out with her BFF. No. Was it Selena Gomez, no. Miley Cyrus, no, or Lindsay Lohan? Lindsay Lohan, who is she again? <laughs> okay, that eliminates her. No, I think it's Miley, isn't it? Miley, I think. Miley! Miley. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Julie. Boy, I'll tell you. Okay. Uh, Krista, you just won $750. Wow. Congratulations to you. Here's, you. here's your loot. Here's your loop. Thank you. And everybody, Joy, thank you so much You're for welcome. coming. Uh, thank you. Love you. Love you too. And Bye. check out Joy's one woman show. It's called Me, My Mouth, and I. At the I, Cherry Lane Theater. At the Cherry Lane Theater here in New York City through December 21st. Yeah. Up next, from the two, Clinton Kelly's here with some great Thanksgiving side dishes. Don't go far. Get your fill of juicy hot topics. And she went from queen of mean to queen of lean, Lisa Lampanelli. Huh, Thanksgiving leftover ideas you never thought of. Wow, how apple pie delicious. <laughs> Thursday on an all new Wendy. It's a full hour Wendy event. Mary J. Blige. Her struggles, her joy. The one on one conversation you won't hear anywhere else. Huh. The Wendy stage to do her newest hit and serves up an old school jam just for us. Tuesday on an all new Wendy. Come on. So good. <laughs> Thanksgiving is this week. So, here to help us with some tips on how to make our holidays the best ever is one of the co hosts of one of my favorite shows, The Chew. Say hello to Clinton <laughs> Kelly. Thanks, so wonderful to see you. So, are your shallots burning? My shallots are burning. Oh. They, they, they're burned, but screw them. Yeah. Okay, Go. what are three tips on making it the best Thanksgiving ever? All right, I think, first of all, to take the stress off your table, set your table the night before. That's really important. Just get it done so you don't have to do it on Thanksgiving Day. Also, put all your platters out so that you know that you have enough room on the table for everything. Yeah. Um, the other thing I'd say is get, release the need to be perfect. You know, you don't need to do That's grandma's china setting for 20 and everything has to be matchy, matchy, matchy. Yes. Mix and match your plates, have a good time with These it. are um, Clinton's line, by the way, at Macy's. They're dishwasher safe, I already checked. Yes, they are. And Michael yeah. Okay, so what are we making first, and why does this turkey look so juicy, unlike the ones that I make? I know, you have a thing about dry turkey. Do you have a thermometer? No, but I'll get one. You need one. That's the thing. Okay. You have to take that turkey out of the oven when it hits 160 degrees because it will continue cooking after you take it out. It will go up to 165, which is where you want it. If you go above 165 to 170, 180, you're going to have a dry. Am I allowed to say that? Really? 
Really? Yeah. That's, a, that's a treat. And then what is all this deliciousness in here? So you can stuff the cavity with things like fresh herbs. We happen to have thyme and some lemon in here, and that perfumes the meat from the inside. So the, more flavor. the stuffing is not in there? The stuffing is not in there. If you cook the stuffing, uh -huh. if you put it on the inside, then you have to get the whole bird really hot to make sure that the stuffing is cooked to the right temperature. That makes the bird dry. So cook the stuffing on the side. Use lots of butter, and it won't be dry. All right, what is this? This is a French 75. Cheers. This is my new favorite cocktail. It is a little bit of gin and some simple syrup and some lemon juice. You know, like? You don't no, like it? it's gin and juice first thing in the morning. It's gin and juice. <laughs> okay. Now you have. Mm, it's, and there's champagne in it, too. And it's delicious. Mm. Listen, this is one of my least favorite things. Why should I like this? The cranberry sauce? Oh, I can't. It's bitter. Oh, I want you to try my cranberry sauce. Okay. All right, so, this, my cranberry sauce has a secret ingredient, which is mango. Okay, so. Okay. Uh huh. I've been cooking a lot with mango lately because they're available year round. They taste delicious. They're super low in calories. It makes a, a tart fruit palatable. You are you, uh, palatable. Oh, wow, that's high praise. There. No, Thanks, no, but, I love it. This, yeah, uh huh. Yeah, uh -huh. okay, good. All right. So this is, it's so easy to make. I actually use canned cranberry sauce, the whole sauce, uh, the whole uh, berry sauce, a little bit of orange juice, a little orange zest, some, um, uh, some mango, and some ground ginger and cinnamon, and a touch of salt. And you're, look at you're eating all this that. This is the way you do it. All right, great. I'm glad you like it. Okay. Come on. It's really high in vitamin C, those mangoes, too. Okay, this is a scalloped sweet potato. You probably had potatoes gratin before. Yes. This is a sweet potato gratin, which is really no fail. You just make a, a cream sauce with cheese with some gruyere and some cream, and you melt that down with some salt and pepper, and then you have your sweet potatoes, which you just layer like so. You peel them and you slice them into uh, about one eighth this of an inch is rounds. And then what you do is then you just keep layering the sauce. And this, okay, and then you put mm. more cheese on top, some Parmesan wow. cheese. You put that in the oven for a little over an hour, and it comes out looking like this. It's Amaze. very nice presentation. You know what? The sweet of the sweet potato combined with the um, the tangy of the cheese. It's like a party in my mouth. It's a party in your mouth. Okay, all right. So okay. Good. All right, and then the next thing I brought for you Come are and my my shallots burned, but then let's pretend that they didn't. All okay. right. So, uh, but they burn because they've been cooking in bacon fat. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you take a half pound of bacon, cut it up, and then you reserve about a tablespoon of the bacon fat. Take the bacon outside, um, and then you put a, a shallot chopped up into that bacon fat, and then you let that cook until translucent, not Brussels until it's golden brown. Are only like that. my favorite vegetable. Ever. Ever? Uh, yeah. So these are half blanched Brussels sprouts, uh -huh. okay? And then you put those back into the bacon fat with the shallot, get them really nice and brown and crispy. Then you put the bacon back in. Now that bacon looks like some real thick country bacon. Mm, that's the best kind of bacon, mm -hmm. the thick kind. And then you cook this down until it's about here. And then what you're going to do is just take a little bit of balsamic vinegar, a oh. tablespoon of that, and that adds a little bit okay. of brightness and acidity to the whole thing. And then you take some Parmesan cheese, oh. and then you sprinkle that on top. And then here you go, have another little bowl Listen, off to the side um, for you. I'm going to make. I'm going to be making that. I definitely want your cranberry sauce, and I want this right here. And I'm going to do what you said with this turkey. You're, All oh. these recipes are available at wendyshow.com. Clinton, hold on. <laughs> Of course, delish. You love it, right? <laughs> Clinton's got a new book. It's called Freaking Fabulous on a Budget. It's in stores now. Everyone in our studio audience is going home with their copy. Yeah! Ask Wendy is next. Make your feed a little more fabulous. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for hot topic updates, candid pictures, and of course, behind the scenes did. Get in on the conversation today. All right, so we're back. I ate my way through the commercials. It's time for Ask Wendy. How you doing, Pink? How you doing, Wendy? <laughs> How can I help? My name is Jashawn, so I have a 13-year-old son, and I just recently found out through growing through his phone that he has a girlfriend. Uh -huh. Yes, and I also found out that he had his first kiss with this girlfriend. Uh -huh. Right. So, but my husband doesn't think it's a problem, but I do. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to... I feel like I'm upset that I had to find out through his phone and through his text messages. Is that the problem, or is it the problem that he has a girlfriend? No, it's not the problem that he has a girlfriend. It's a problem because he hasn't shared with you. You feel yes. left out. I had to... Snoop. You have to snoop. Mm -hmm. um, well, here's what I would do okay. if I were in your position. I would um, make up a story about 
when you were 13. Okay. It can be true, but to be more drastic with kids, sometimes you have to make it up. Okay. And, and <laughs> something about how you had a little boyfriend okay. or about how you stole a kiss in the stairwell at school also. Mm. It doesn't make it right. You know, you have to identify with these kids. Okay. So it, it doesn't make it right what he did or what you did. But, son, these are the things. You're, you didn't invent this we game, can son. We with each other. <laughs> yeah. Talk to your yeah. mom. I'm down. Okay. Yeah. okay. Good luck. Thank you. We have time for another question. How are you doing? Hi, Wendy. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. <laughs> my name is Lauren, and I have been uh, dating my boyfriend for four years. Uh -huh. And uh, he basically told me that he wants to propose to me once we get our own place next year, Aww. which is nice. <laughs> I love him very much, but he's kind of like has no style, very geek, <laughs> like still wears Mario T-shirts. <laughs> and oh. how do I gently tell him which ring I want yeah, so he, he doesn't get me an ugly one? He's not going to be. <laughs> well. I am old-fashioned in that I do believe that a man is supposed to pick out the ring. Yeah. And I would tell you, go to the jeweler ahead of time and tell mm -hmm. the jeweler which one you want. Only if your boyfriend ever finds out you did that, he will be very violated. It's going to yeah. cause a huge fight, so you're not going to do that. Um, I would tell you, ask your mother to talk to him, but moms need to stay out of it. Boys need yeah, to get right. their own rings. But what I will say to you, and I think that this is fine, mm -hmm. at least let him know what shape you want. Do you want a marquee? Okay. Do you want a round? Do you want pear shape? Do you want diamonds dancing on the side? Or do you just want a clean ring sitting on top of a thing? And also, what color metal? Do you want platinum? Yeah. Or do you want yellow or whatever? And what type of band would you like? Would you like an eternity band? <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> you, you can have a conversation with him about those specific things, but no more than that, OK? okay. Congratulations in advance. Thank you. Up next, everybody, a lucky audience member is going to get a chance to win more cold, hard cash in a game of race. It's time to play Race the Clock. This is Valerie from Camden, New Jersey. She's a third grade teacher. Valerie? Yes. You're going to have 30 seconds on the clock to answer the following question. Please don't help her, okay? And if you answer correctly, then you'll win $300 in cash. Okay. okay. Ready? Yes. I'm hosting the Soul Train Awards this Sunday night. Name five artists nominated for a Soul Train Award this year. Go! Uh, oh. Oh, what's that? Chris Brown. <laughs> Uh, Keep going. Um, um, Nicki Minaj. Uh, um, thank you. Um, 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 Beyonce. Uh huh. Uh, That's three. Yes. What's his name? Oh, 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 We'll be right back. Yay! Tomorrow, the one and only Russell Brand will be here. And of course, I've got you covered with all the juicy hot topics. I so love you for watching today. And I'll see you next time on Wendy. Bye. Yay!